Greg Pallas is trying to save your vote, this time specifically in Georgia, and he's got the Republicans running scared. So scared, they're hiding in the dark, literally. Check this out, leave your comments, sing the bell, share with your friends, and subscribe to our channel. It's the investigative journalist and author of How Trump Stole 2020, or at least tried to. GregPallas.com is his website. His Twitter handle is Greg underscore Pallas. Greg, are you back from Georgia or are you still down there? Uh, I just arrived back from Georgia. I'm taking a Christmas break, uh, a Hanukkah break, whatever, and uh, uh, trying to stay a little bit safer. But, my God, it was, it was uh, skullduggery, fun and games, madness. You have no idea. Well, actually, I'll tell you what the idea is if you, if you want to hear the please, craziness please that went do on. So. Okay, so when uh, we last, last left our tale, our last discussion, um, Black Voters Matter, uh, the Hispanic uh, Rights Group, Southwest Voter Registration Education Project, Operation Push, all these big voting rights organizations uh, sued the state of Georgia because they had, I had discovered, if you remember, uh, the removal of 198,000 voters illegally from the voter rolls of Georgia. They just said they moved, and they never did. They're right there. I'm talking to them. I'm filming them. They're saying, I, I, why can't I vote? I'm, I'm still in Georgia. So um, these major organizations and these top voting rights lawyers led by the National Bar Association, C.K. Hoffler, uh, Fred Gray, who was uh, um, Rosa Parks' lawyer back even back in 19... Uh, 54. Like here, 90s, uh, he turned 90 at the trial. So here's what happened. Right. The judge gave us a trial, but he said, you didn't, on a technicality, we didn't give enough notice to the state to get an injunction to get people back on before the election. So the lawyer said, well, okay, so let's give them notice. So we filed a new suit with new notice. Um, so that'll be two. And we notified the Secretary of State were coming by to drop off the suit and give him notice, followed by, by the way, all the local TV cameras and CNN and everyone else. And uh, so we went up into the Capitol, across from Brian Kemp's office, and uh, to deliver the material to Secretary of State with the cameras rolling. They locked the doors. They turned out the lights. They put on a little yellow taggy uh, with a cell phone number. We called that, and it you know, just went to voicemail. So they were literally hid in the dark for two hours. So we said, okay, uh, we have another route. Latasha Brown of Black Voters Matter said, let's go another way. So we went over to another state office building, and lo and behold, there, hiding behind a door, was the director of elections uh, for the state of Georgia. And uh, he came out, and we you know, slapped the suit on him. But even more, the judge had said, listen, You've got real problems with your, with your, uh, you know, you've clearly removed people who, um, who haven't moved. There's, a, you know, terrible discrepancies in your purge list. That's the, the term for removing voters. And you have to meet. You should meet with the experts and meet with Black Voters Matter and Greg Pallas. So here we were. And they said, so when are you going to meet with us? The judge said, meet with us. And he was hemming and hawing. And then also, and the cameras are rolling, so he's trying to get out of there. He's, uh, and... Mm -hmm. uh, and at the same time, um, so then I asked him something else. The state said, the state gave the, told the court that they had checked with the post office. This is, uh, you have to use a licensee. The post office, there's licensees who can get in the post office computers. Because, you know, who knows if you've moved? It's the post office. And uh, they said that they used the post office checked. We checked, and they didn't. They hired, uh, they claimed that they hired uh, some contractor named Anchor, we, we hired Anchor, that is Black Voters Matter and the Palace Investigative Fund. They said they never worked with the state of Georgia. They basically pulled a con on the court. And um, mm. so I, I confronted them with it. I said, you, you actually, in effect, you perjured yourself to the court to get out of putting these voters back on the voter rolls. And don't forget, mm -hmm. Tom, this, what's unusual about this case, here's about whether voters are wrongly removed from the voter rolls. And we know what color they are because we met them, Mr. Diaz, Mr. Watson, um, Martin Luther King's cousin, these people who've never left Georgia. And, um, you know, so they, uh, they conned the court into, uh, with uh, this material to try to avoid getting these people back on. And the Republican National Committee joined the case on behalf of the state. It's like, why is the RNC here? Why is the... 
the the top hitmen, including Trump's, by the way, personal lawyers who are defending him against uh, potential criminal charges in New York, um, why are they in the case? Why are they trying to stop voters from voting in Georgia? I mean, if you want to win the election, isn't the uh, the Democratic small d uh, the Democratic way is to um, convince the voters to vote for you as opposed to blocking them because you don't like their color? That's how it's supposed to work. Yeah, you you thought that. Remember in the sixth grade, you were told, you know, everyone everyone gets to vote if you're a citizen. Mm-hmm. Um, well. Welcome to Georgia. I mean, maybe in America, but not in Georgia. So we're still fighting it. And now we've got this uh, uh, second lawsuit. So let's see what they, uh, if they're going to continue to block these voters. We've, gone th- we've gotten a lot, thousands back on. In fact, the judge noted that. And they said, oh, this can- creates confusion. But the fun and games, literally, I-, I haven't had targets of my investigations do that in a long time, literally turn out the lights, lock themselves in, and hide in the dark. You have to understand, this is in the state capital, across from the governor's is this, office. Is this because, like, uh, you know, this this whole thing about, you know, you've got to give, you've got to serve people, you've got to physically hand the papers to them? Is that a legal requirement? Yes. I mean, did you actually have to physically say, here? Yes, we had to physically say, here are the papers, accept them. Now, you have to understand, we notified them, we called them, we issued a press release even, you know, join us, so, you know, so because the local... You know, all the uh, local and some national television wanted to get this, and reporters. Um, you know, and and they so they they literally hid, and but they forgot that we figured. You know, that we found that we literally hunted them down. It was ridiculous. You have some of the top lawyers in the United States. You have Black Voters Matter, Latasha Brown. All these people are all you know, and they're hiding. So then we run off to this other state office and we catch them. We get them on camera. In fact, that's one of the things that the that the courts that our uh, lawyers are very concerned with that we actually have videotape of them accepting the suit. We got the director of elections. We said uh, one of our lawyers said, "Oh, I see a timestamp machine there. Would you timestamp this? This is all on videotape because these guys will deny we ever gave them the the papers. You know, so they're playing games." So, what, the issue so is, what does this mean for these 190,000 Georgians who, who uh, uh, Kemp had thrown off the voting rolls before he became governor, um, yes. if that is the, the genesis of this, what happens yes. to those people now? Do they still have to, will they be able to vote in the election? Unfortunately, well, we, we think that we have about 20,000 back on because we ran a, a heck of a campaign, including a giant electronic billboard featuring um, Rosario Dawson telling people, check your registration. So we had a big check your registration campaign so people would know if they were called. We, we had massive calling done by, um, by the uh, Southwest Voter Registration Education Project, um, you know, in English and Spanish. We, so we got tens of thousands of people back on. We don't know how many exactly, but I'm going to tell you, over 100,000 people are going to show up and not be able to vote. We already got a lot of these people try to vote in the, in the general, and they don't know what the heck happened. Um, they mm-hmm. don't know why they were removed from the voter rolls. And a lot of people then filled out provisional ballots, because the federal law says if you show up and you can't vote, you must, by federal law, be given this provisional ballot. But by Georgia law, they can't count the ballot. So, so, yeah, so you get to pretend you voted. And unfortunately, a lot of people, I talked to one voter, uh, the Waymer family, uh, they were knocked off. They were given provisional ballots, and they thought that they had voted because they were given provisional ballots. But I said, unfortunately, no. Um, and this, it's a tragedy because people don't, because then people also don't realize that they have to re-register. You didn't give the, the Secretary of State enough notice. You gave them that notice over the last day or two. Yeah. That is not in, a, in, in, that's not in time for those people to automatically be put back in the voter rolls for the January, it's the 5th, right, the election? Well, we have, like I say, we have the best voting rights lawyers in the country, and they're going to try to um, try to get another injunction, see if we can get them back on. It's ridiculous. And again, the fun and, you know, the, you know, it's absurd. You have the Secretary of State hiding in the dark, trying not to receive a legal paper. All the cameras are rolling. It's nuts. It just shows to what lengths they will go. So we will that try. That perjure? Rassen Perger, that's really his name. And, um, you know, but this is just one of the games. I mean, one of the things I should say is that I wish that that were the only evil thing that they were doing, the only Jim Crow trick. I was down in Cobb County, which is normally Republican, 
they voted for Biden in Cobb County. Oh, in I used Georgia. to live there in Cobb County. Yeah. We, we, we were the ones who sent Newt Gingrich to Congress. <laughs> yes. So Newt Gingrich's county went for Biden. And so they panicked. So there are 11 early voting stations in uh, Cobb County. There were for the general election. And now they're panicked that all these uh, Democrats and liberals, black folk, brown folk are coming in by the thousands to vote early. So they closed six of the 11 voting stations in Cobb County. All the voting stations that were closed were in African-American neighborhoods. I, I mean, this is not like 1955. Um, so yeah. they literally closed the six early voting stations in Cobb County that were in the African-American neighborhoods. And then, of course, people moved to the other voting stations where you ended up with three-hour lines. By the way, Tom, the turnout is way above the presidential election, which was a high turnout to be – that was a record turnout. And that record's right. being busted in the, in the early voting right now. Every day, lines, three, four hours long. I've never seen anything like it. I mean, people are not going to be dissuaded. They can move the polling stations to the Arctic, and they're going to, and the public is going to show up. I mean, people yeah. are going to vote. Yeah, the question is, will their votes be counted? Well, this is a big problem because, for example, I, three voters, one of the things that people are doing, I mean, uh, uh, one good sign is that people are not mailing in their ballots. I can't tell you how many people have contacted our, uh, you know, gregpalace.com to say, I mailed in my vote 10 days before the election, 12 days before the election, and they said it was late. So people are now going to drop boxes. But two of the three voters that I encountered putting votes in drop boxes forgot their return address on the envelope. They figured, well, I'm dropping it off. It's, you know, I don't need a return address. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you do. They'll do anything to knock out your vote. It is ugly, and any little mistake on that mail-in drop, well, basically drop-off ballot that people are, are putting in those boxes because they don't want to wait. And some people can't and don't want to wait three hours. In addition, we have the GOP. You ready for this? They're putting cameras above the drop boxes to try to identify people they say are I illegally dropping off ballots because you can't drop off someone's ballot unless you live in their household. I used to live in Cobb County, uh, uh, and I, so I had an opportunity every two years to vote against Newt Gingrich. And uh, uh, someday, remind me to tell you the whole story about uh, uh, Newt coming to the public schools in a way that produced such a local uproar that uh, one of my kids ended up homeschooling out of this. Uh, it's an amazing story. I mean, this is how politicized Newt had, uh, had gotten our schools. Um, and this was, you know, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. It was just amazing. Um, but in any case, uh, it, did I hear you during the break we were talking, and did I understand you correctly to say that all of the early voting locations in Cobb County, Cobb County's about half black, that all of the voting locations in Cobb County and black neighborhoods were closed? And if so, was that Raffson Perger who did that, the Secretary of State, or was it no, Brian it Kemp, was, the governor? Um, or? The so not only did the people vote for uh, Joe Biden, but they threw out some of those county commissioners. So the lame duck Republican county commissioners closed those early voting stations. By the way, Tom, that is – the ACLU tells me that's completely against the law. Barbara Arnwine, the top voting rights expert in America, Professor Arnwine at Columbia University, um, she was there in Cobb. You know, and they – you know, and so there was pressure, so they reopened two of those. But – that's just the beginning. We also had in Cobb County, in, in Georgia, you have this weird system that anyone can challenge anyone else's vote or registration. So we have that organization, this right-wing and, frankly, racist organization called True the Vote that is literally challenging. Are you ready for this? 300,000 voters on the Georgia voter rolls, overwhelmingly voters of color and young people. 300,000, because any voter can challenge another voter. Yeah, to say true, those true the vote is the modern incarnation of... Uh, right, it's the modern yeah. incarnation of Operation Eagle Eye, the, the thing that William oh, Rehnquist yeah. helped start back in Arizona in the 19, late 1950s, early 1960s, where they would go to polling places and challenge voters, because Arizona had a similar law, and he used that to challenge uh, Hispanic and, and Native American voters for years. I mean, that's how William Rehnquist made his chops in the Republican Party and started clawing his way up to becoming, you know, Chief Justice of the U.S. Supreme Court. 
was, you know, his, his racist efforts to stop people of color from voting in Arizona. So, you know, now we've got this national organization funded by racist right-wing billionaires. I mean, it's just mind-boggling, the whole thing. Um, Can you imagine? So, I mean, and I, as I said, they, they're even having cameras above the drop boxes so they can do face recognition and say, oh, that person doesn't live with the person whose ballot they dropped off. Are you kidding me? Right. It, you know, and right. then you What's have to next? go through a challenge. Understand, if your registration is challenged, you can get pulled off the voter rolls, and then you have to go to a hearing. And, of course, when's the hearing going to be? Next year, after the, after the vote's after over? the election. You're yeah. talking a third of a million voters facing a challenge right now by these right-wing crazies. Well, they, I don't know if they're crazies. Maybe they're very smart, because maybe that's the only way that they can uh, keep Mitch McConnell from unemployment. So you know, does that mean that the 300,000 names that, that True the Vote has thrown out of Georgia voters, uh, not thrown out, has, has put forward? That, mm -hmm. that, that, yeah, has challenged. Thank you. That, that, that those 300,000 people, when they show up to vote or when they mail in their vote, um, it will be set aside and not counted? That's what they're that's what they're counting on, and uh, and very and or if they mail in their ballots, it'll be set aside and not counted, and then there'll have to be a whole fight over each of those ballots. It's madness. Now understand, there's 159 counties in Georgia, and each one will make decisions about this. And what we're worried mm -hmm. about is especially in those rural counties where we have literally bus loads of lawyers running around to try to protect the voters. And they can't stop every challenge. They can't challenge every challenge. It's, it's gone. It's completely out of control, the Jim Crow operation, completely out of control. Yeah. And, and large, uh, large you know, chunks and, of rural Georgia, having lived there for 13 years, large chunks of rural Georgia are black counties. I mean, there's, there's white rural Georgia and there's black rural Georgia. And, yep. and uh, uh, you know, so. they're also, by the way, because there's massive early voting, and as you know, uh, African Americans tend to vote on Sundays after church souls to the polls, which is harder to do because of COVID. But um, the counties have stopped um, uh, opening. Some many, most counties, 120 of the counties have not had weekend voting. That's against the law. They literally shut the polls because they know black people right. working during the week have to vote on weekends. Greg, they're Republicans. They don't care about the law. They'll deal with the law after the election. They only care about getting power. So if they can win the election, they can lose the lawsuits afterwards, but they still have that political position, don't they? Well, that's what we're trying to convince the courts, that you have to act now. Otherwise, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? Yeah. It, it's it's yeah. devastating. But you know what? People are energized by the fact that they're trying to steal a vote is actually energizing people because they realize if someone's stealing your vote, it must be worth something. People, I've never seen turnouts like this. Every day is like election day. Uh, it's stunning. And people will not leave the lines. Uh, I'm just worried about the harassment that's going on. And of course, and, and add to this the overlayer um, of the white supremacists running around with their you know, swastika tattoos, you know, intimidating voters.